for us to deal decisively with all security challenges facing the nation which have been impeding our development. In line with the President's directive and my own vision statement, which is to have a highly motivated and professional naval force capable of shaping the security outcomes within Nigeria's maritime domain and our maritime area of interest and the littorals, including land-based engagements in fulfillment of Nigeria's national interest. I conceived the mission which is to maintain and equip a professional, competent and ethical naval force while leveraging on all elements of national power for the effective defense of Nigeria's maritime area of interest against all forms of threat in fulfillment of our national security imperatives. To achieve this mission, my command philosophy, which has been communicated, is anchored on leading with integrity, courage, and relentless pursuit for excellence. The philosophy is also in consonance with Nigerian Navy core values. Deriving from this philosophy, my strategic end state is the attainment of a safe and secure maritime environment in Nigeria and our general maritime area of interest, which is the Gulf of Guinea, to enable wealth recreation, economic prosperity, as well as national security, growth and development. This is in line with the Africa Integrated Maritime Strategy and also the Nigerian Maritime Strategy, which was launched last year. One of the conceptual initiatives which I am eager to listen to you is the strategic plan to tackle oil theft in Nigeria, which is a serious crime that is costing the nation huge sums of money every year. It has become a very serious, serious threat to our national security and development, and this administration is determined to put an end to this menace of oil theft. Recently, there has been a lot of media frenzy on this issue of oil theft and crude oil theft in general. Unfortunately, some of these are intentionally propagated to embarrass the Nigerian Navy and misinform unsuspecting members of the public. We cannot afford to be complacent, therefore, or make the Nigerian Navy vulnerable for exploitation by these uh, mischief makers. By this, I mean the unrelenting efforts of, of some state, uh, non-state actors to put all the blames of oil theft squarely on the doors of the Nigerian Navy, which we all know is not true. It is our, we are duty bound to reverse this impression by our actions in terms of securing the maritime domain and stamping out oil theft in Nigeria. I therefore want to make this clear that under my watch there is zero tolerance for oil theft. Any officer or rating or any person who is found to be involved in oil theft will be punished to the full extent of the law. We will not spare anyone. I expect you to go back and educate your officers and ratings about the dangers of oil theft. The government looks up to us to lead the fight and we have no option but to do just that. Accordingly, we must work together with sister services, the armed forces, the police and other military, others, uh, other security agencies to stamp out the menace of oil theft. Nigerians expect the Navy to remain above reproach, to remain above board, to remain law abide as a force they can admire and rely upon. Gentlemen, it behoves on us to take the pride in this obligation and do our duty. Discipline is essential for any successful organization, but it is especially important to the Navy as a military force. As commanders, I am counting on you to uphold the tenets of discipline in your command. Be a role model to your officers and men. Set high standards of conduct and enforce the rules fairly and consistently, without fear or favor. Always do the right thing, especially when it is hard, because 
The right things are always difficult, but it is your duty to make sure that you do them. Also, do not forget the need for enhanced civil military cooperation and relations with civilians in your areas of operation. When the people who are there to serve see us as partners instead of opponents, they are more likely to support our efforts and cooperate with us to stamp out the menace of criminalities and illegalities in our maritime domain. This can make a big difference in our ability to achieve our objectives and build a more stable and secure environment. I charge you to be mindful of the welfare of those under you. Prioritize the welfare of your subordinates, not just as a compassionate matter, but as an essential to mission accomplishment. Importantly, create conducive environment for your subordinates to air their views, contribute to decision making, and where required, seek redress. This is a very critical aspect if you must achieve success as a commander. In doing this, keep close watch on your mental and physical well-being, as well as emotional health and the health of those that you lead. When people are happy and healthy, they are more productive and resilient and are also more likely to stay in the service. This is very important considering the high speed of people, uh, rising cases of personnel trying to leave the service. On my part, I will contribute to provide opportunities for job satisfaction and self-actualization as well as recognize and reward hard work and dedication while making sure that those who do not want to go according to the rules will also be adequately punished. Issues relating to personnel accommodation, uniform items, appointments through drive cycle are already receiving attention. Similarly, I have directed that vehicles be provided by commands, bases and units, including and also boats for those in the riverine areas as a fuel subsidy palliative to ease transportation problems facing our personnel. My expectation during this retreat is that we will have robust discussions that will lead to far-reaching decisions on repositioning the Nigerian Navy to better meet its constitutional, statutory, and assigned mandate and responsibilities in a rapidly changing security landscape. I urge us not to be content with the status quo. We must identify precisely where we are as a service, determine where we need to be, and then develop a plan to get there. Most importantly, we must identify specific barriers constraining our performance and mission accomplishment. Success demands that we are ruthlessly honest in our assessment. I am confident that at the end of this retreat, we would have a roadmap that will address the threats facing the Nigerian Navy and the country as a whole.